Welcome to the next lesson, calculating your final profit numbers and choosing your top product opportunity. And here's what we'll be covering. How to calculate the final profit numbers for each of your top product opportunities. What is a good profit margin? And how to use this information when choosing your final top product opportunity. By now, you should have captured the true product costs and entered them into the product opportunity spreadsheet for each of your top products, and we should have had three of them, and then for each of your top suppliers, and we should have three of those for each product, so nine entries in total. But how do you use this information when calculating your final profit numbers for each combination of your product and supplier? Well, it's by using the FBA revenue calculator and then capturing that final profit number in the product opportunity spreadsheet. Now remember, you need to do this for each top product opportunity and for each supplier, so you need to do this at least nine times, maybe more if you've actually captured more products or more suppliers. Let's go over to our product opportunity spreadsheet and then our FBA revenue calculator tool to review one more time how this is done. So here I am on the product opportunity spreadsheet, and the first product that I'm going to work on is the rabbit corkscrew, and I'm going to look at one supplier for now, the one in yellow, which is the Wylonkin Crafts and Gifts Company. And over here we have the supplier price already, we got an estimate for the shipping costs, and we know the estimate for the inspection services is. So we add those three together, and that is the cost of the product. That total is $6.60, and we will enter that into the Fulfillment by Amazon Revenue Calculator. I'm going to put that down here in the Cost of Product field. Then we already know as well the shipping to Amazon total, which is $0.70 cents right there and we'll put that into the ship to Amazon field. We also know that the price that we plan on selling this for is $26.50 and then we'll simply hit calculate and it pulls up a net profit of $10.73 and we enter that back on our product opportunity spreadsheet under the net profit, so $10.73. And the net profit margin then is automatically calculated at 40.49%. I'm gonna quickly go back to the FBA tool and val validate that. And yes, it is 40.49%. So we are done coming up with our estimated or final profit numbers for this product for this supplier. And the final profit number is $10.73 per unit or 40.49%. Now what we need to do is to replicate this exact same process for the next supplier for that product and then for the third supplier for that product as well. And then after we're done with this product, we go to the other product, our number two product opportunity, and then to our number three product opportunity until we've calculated our final profit for each one of our products. Now once you've captured all the profit margins for your different products on the product opportunity spreadsheet, you're probably wondering, well, what exactly is a good profit margin? And while some large companies out there are perfectly fine with a 10% profit margin, in this business, we try to shoot for something around 30%. And you get that by taking your profit and dividing by the selling price. A really good profit margin is 50% or higher, and it's definitely obtainable, but probably not for your first product, maybe for your second or third product once you've established your brand and really know this business. You want to keep the following in mind as well. Common spending around 10% on advertising throughout the course of your business because you'll always want to keep bringing in high quality traffic for your products. And for product launches, expect to sell the first 20 to maybe 100 products at a steep discount in order to really get traction and get your product selling well. We'll talk more about that during Module 6 when we start planning your launch blitz and rank. Your profit margins should also increase over time, and here's how. First, if you start off with a relatively low selling price, which is one strategy, you can likely raise your price later on once your product is established and selling well. And also, you have the ability to reduce your cost later on. You can get a better price by ordering higher volumes, and you can also negotiate better prices with your supplier. There are several factors to keep in mind when choosing your final top product opportunity. Which one of them has the best chance to make the most profit each month? Is there one or more that simply won't make you enough profit? Then you can just eliminate them right away. Is there one that sticks out to you that you really like? And of course, it still meets the other criteria as well. Or is there one that has way less competition and you know it'll be easier to compete with? These are all things to keep in mind when choosing your top product opportunity. So now it's time. Once you've captured all of your profit margins and the product opportunity spreadsheet, do this. Choose your top opportunity. This will be the product that we order samples from in the very next lesson. So go do that and I'll see you there.